So how have you been? I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. so. And how are you doing? Very good, very good. Very, um, you know, still still doing a lot of the research and stuff with the AI and the mm -hmm. um, Internet of Things, the global information grid, and now this 5G stuff that's popped up that's got me very concerned. And I know with your background, you know, you'd be, I, I thought of you right away. You'd talk <laughs> to Barbara. Well, it concerns me greatly. Um, the number of... Um, well, first of all, the frequency range goes very, very uh, high in order to get into additional frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think that that's some of the issues, and so consequently, they have to have a lot of um, a lot of different towers all over the place. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And what I've been uh, reading, we've had a couple of discussions with, you know, some other people on this. Um, what it looks like they're going to be doing is installing these towers at between 8 and 10 feet above the Correct. ground. And they're going to be positioned about, um, oh, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 to 1,200 feet apart. Not even, I think. Probably you're going to find them at the end between seven and nine hundred feet apart. Wow. Because I think that's going to be optimum in terms of transmission. Okay. And what can you tell us about the capability of this frequency range in the, in the microwave radiation spectrum that can go through walls and... Um, and well, the, the concern, of course, is that how deep does it penetrate into, under the, to the, through the skin? Mm-hmm. How deep does it get into the human body? At certain frequency ranges, the, the human body absorbs like a sponge. And so what does that mean? Because we're electromagnetic animals to a large extent, uh, and our body uh, moves around a lot of electrolytic fluid through our nervous system. So, you know, that's very disruptive. I don't think that we... Um, I, I think that a large portion of what we're facing in terms of health issues today probably is related to electromagnetic radiation, DJ. And how do you, how do you see that progressing um, with this power rollout that they're planning with the 5G? I mean, they're looking to have this thing up and rolling by the end of the year, beginning of uh, 2018, and there seems to be such a dynamic push behind it and it doesn't make sense and if I could share a little story with you um, I'm on the road a lot and I carry a computer with me so I it was about two or three weeks ago I had to find a place that had Wi-Fi I had to mm -hmm. get connected to do a voice thing and I found this cafe it says Wi-Fi available and I sit down big sign in, right on top of the front door says 5G available. Well, let me tell you something. I, I didn't experience any improvement in the voice quality, the audio quality, or the connection speed with mm -hmm. that. So why do you think this pushes? I think it is because they're running out of frequencies in which to broadcast. I think that the theory of everything being interconnected is driving a, a, um, an effort to increase the frequency uh, with which they can communicate. Because mm -hmm. if they want every, if they, okay, and I use that in quotation marks, are looking to have everything connected so that you have ultimate uh, convenience then you're going to need a huge band of frequencies that you can use. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. In yeah. other words, if you want to have everything connected, if you want your medical records connected to your financial records connected to you, connected to all of that requires huge um, a diversity of frequency, a large bandwidth, um, and the capability of handling all that data mm -hmm. uh, on multiple channels. So that's why this, that's what's driving it. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. 
what else is there? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just amassing so much data on everything about mm -hmm. everyone, about all human-based activity. And, you know, I believe you're absolutely right, is that they need to move to a new level where they can now exchange massive amounts of data very quickly. That's right. And integrate it. Mm -hmm. and not just exchange it, but then use it, turn data into information by adding context to it. Mm -hmm. That's where the value comes in. That's where your value added is. That's where your money is. Mm. Um, so they need, they need that frequency, increase in frequencies. And they're really topped out in many of the other bands. So mm -hmm. they're going to go for this. And people are probably going to buy into it. I was thinking about your comment about you know, how can we best let people know. Well, um, I don't have Alexa in my house. Do you have Alexa in your house? Oh, no, she's not invited. Right. <laughs> I don't want her in there. <laughs> I took the tape off of my camera on my computer to talk to you. Oh. But it go up the minute it goes back on, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have all of the conveniences that are currently off in the marketplace? We don't. No. You don't have it in my house. No, I try to avoid that stuff. Um, you know, I, I, to my, much to my dismay, I realized we bought a refrigerator, an LG refrigerator that, uh -oh. yeah, I opened up the door and I saw a little uh, Wi-Fi symbol up there. I'm like, what the heck is this? I got to open the manual and it's like, oh, well, it communicates back and forth to LG so it can self-diagnose. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, great. If I would have known that, I would have went on Craigslist and bought an old refrigerator. <laughs> right. I mean, that's really where it's at, isn't it? And, and cars. I mean, um, mm -hmm. we have two cars. It's nice that they're paid for, but they're both specifically purchased because they predate, just predate, a lot of the smart technology. Awesome. Not, not by far, but just a little bit. But how but we go down to our, our nephew's house, right, and his wife, and they've got the latest gadgets everywhere, and they totally are extolling the virtues. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to offer full convenience of full connectivity, the connectivity of everything. Mm -hmm. Billions and billions of nodes coming together. It's, that's going to be, that's a reality that's possible. Yeah. I don't see people saying no to that. I don't see them saying no even when they start to get sicker, when soft tumors start increasing even more, mm -hmm. uh, when, um, you know, this, so, and I don't see that they're going to really um, stop, The human beings are going to go for, except for perverse people like me. Are going to go for the convenience. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you What do you make of um, you know if you look at the government way the, the um, I think it was the White House put out a paper uh, about the new five G infrastructure and how it was going to make everybody's lives more interconnected and it was going to be able to bring de data to people um, at much faster speeds and you'd be able to get, you know, go out on the net and get answers to, let's call them questions, you know, at a much quicker rate. What do you say to people, um, you, know, you know the old adage, you know, being in network engineering myself and systems, you know, your speed is, is only as fast as the slowest link on that chain. So, you know, they can, they can bombard you with all this 5G, and if you've, yeah, I don't know, if you've got to connect, well, the, let me back up, I guess they're trying to move us all off of any type of high, hardwire connection into this wireless thing, but, you know, if you've got an Ethernet cable and your house is wired for Ethernet, I mean, that's as fast as the speed as you're going to get. That's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the bottom line is, is that, that they're going to offer it because they know that too, that that the speed is only related to the slowest link in the chain. So you're going to start to try and read minds and try and reconnect those things so that they happen faster for people. 
and they're served up. Kind of like the difference between mac and cheese uh, that you take out of the freezer and stick in the oven or microwave, mm -hmm. and mac and cheese that you put together from a box, or mac and cheese that you make from scratch. They're going to try and make the connections so that you get the um, mac and cheese up into the microwave. And you don't have to think about the rest of that stuff. Mm. See, that's the de that's the seductive part of this. It's deadly. And and with human nature being the way it is, I don't see it changing, DJ. Yeah, I think we live in. I mean, people walk willingly into into the abyss. Yeah. They walk, you know, and and I don't see. There will be a percentage of obstinate people who hold out, but there will the vast majority of people, I think, will get such a kick out of what's happening that they're not even going to think about the implications. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I think property is very dangerous. I think I don't want it. I don't want the connectivity of everything. I don't even want the basic. Um, however, I use a computer and I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I write on it. Yeah, and speaking of your writings, um, you know, you host a website called The Cold War Warrior, and there's a link to it on the landing page for Level 9 News. Thank and you for that. You're welcome. You've got some awesome stuff on here. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what? You know, prompted you to start this website and doing all the research and you know putting up these awesome articles some of them that contain bits and pieces of history I've never heard of before <laughs> well it's a what that is is a, a um, website wherein I tell stories mm -hmm. um, I had the privilege of being a dust mode on the stage of several significant things, uh, events of the Cold War. I played in the nuclear arena. I worked at the Nevada test site. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I worked in the Pacific doing cleanup uh, out there. Uh, during the time I was in the Pacific, we took all of the chemical munitions out of Europe, not we, but the, the team that was there, and demailed them in a plant on Johnson Atoll. So TBVX and mustard were taken out of Europe from World War One and World War II uh, and transported, and that was quite an ordeal. So as a result of that, the fact that the Cold War has spanned 70 years, or spanned 70 years, and before that World War II, we have been in this country at war for generations. Most people have no memory of not being at war of some kind or other. And this from a nation whose idea of war was to keep the seas open for trade. It was never intended we should have standing military, uh, except for the Navy, which kept the seas open. So the question is, so what are the stories that are out there? That's that, and those are the stories I tell that I find. Thank you for that. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, if you guys haven't been over to the Cold War Warrior, uh, please go over there and check it out. I mean, um, there's there's articles up there like Korea, a Cold War lesson, remembering sacrifice, the Vietnam War, and remembrance. Merry Christmas and thank you to all who served. I guess that's a tribute to the military people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So go check it out. You know, there's, you're going to find some pretty interesting stuff there. <clears throat> but getting back to the 5G, um, yes. Barbara, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the safety levels and ranges? Um, Moving from 4G, you know, which has its own set of problems, then into 5G, which I believe is going to be broadcasting on a spectrum of anywhere from 30 to 300 gigahertz. It is. 
Um, okay, the, the data bandwidth that you'll get, uh, or you currently get, uh, on 4G is 1 GPS. And, and with 5G, you'll get more of that. Um, so the technology, let me, let me get my thought together here so I can say this. Okay. Um, we will be able to have better coverage with 5G. There will be no drop calls, much lower, uh, and better performance. And you'll have a faster broadband than you do, um, you have a faster network than you will under 4G. Um, as far as humans go, I would like to point out that uh, that the way that the body absorbs electromagnetic radiation through the skin and depth is what is what doctors look at when they're looking at X-rays or um, magnetic um, resonance, like an MRI, an MRI or a CT scan. Okay, so doctors look at this and, and they're very careful to measure because your soft tissues don't respond well to a large barrage of interference from electromagnetic radiation. I'm looking for analogies that make sense here. So when you have indiscriminate electromagnetic radiation that is coming at you through 360 degrees, everywhere you go, every few hundred feet, you are walking where you would just come unglued if you had to have 10 x-rays in a row. But you're doing it willingly when you walk through this type of tower, which is set so that it will hit your core of your body. Wow. At, at 8 to 10 feet, it's going to go through the core of your body. Um, that's probably not as eloquent as it needs to be. But so, I cannot stress enough the danger to self that you're inflicting and allowing to be inflicted on others by encouraging the connectivity of everything through this mechanism. So this then damages the body, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, at a cellular level and most probably at that level is also disrupting the integrity of the DNA.